A few months ago, I read this article, which has led me to do a little bit of research. And now I've come to believe that we may very well have a virus that's jumped species. And my concern is that it may easily be able to do so again, only this time into humans and also our pets. So within the next few minutes, I'm going to share with you what I found, show you a little bit of science, and then you can form your own opinion on this. And so this is the original article. It talks about a new disease being found in BC's farmed and wild salmon called Pisine Rio virus, or PRV. It's pretty nasty. It causes uh, stunting and heart and muscle disease in the fish. First discovered on a Norwegian salmon farm in 1999, it seems to have followed the farms around the world wherever they go. But this is the part of the article that caught my attention, was that related real viruses have been found on poultry farms. And guess what? They cause muscle and heart disease in chickens. Now, they didn't say similar real viruses. They said related. So I spoke with a friend of mine who's a scientist, and I said, how hard would it be for a chicken virus to get into a fish? And she did a little bit of research, and she came back and said, not only do they use hydrolyzed chicken feathers, but chicken manure is also part of standard fish farm food cuisine. And so we figured an opportunistic little virus tucked away into a piece of turd that doesn't quite get cooked at a high enough temperature and slips through and away you go. So once we knew it was possible, it started me on my search. So now before we get going, I just want to share this with you. And this is from a study done in 2000 saying that to date the aquarial viruses have been isolated from the fish and all those fishy creatures while the orthorial viruses have been isolated from the reptiles, birds and mammals. And according to them, it's been that way for over 500 million years with very few exceptions. So keep that in mind as we go along. And so this is one of the first studies I came across and it talks about Piscine real virus being a novel real virus. And I looked up the word novel and it's when you want to use the word new and unusual together. And so it didn't take me long at all to find out what makes this virus so very special. And they got a hit here. One of the reads was 49% similar to a protein found in a mammalian orthorheal virus. And it didn't really hit me what that meant until I, I came across this. That Piscine real virus represents a distinct genetic lineage branching off the root of the fish viruses and the mammalian viruses. And I looked up the word distinct, and it means recognizably different in, na in nature from something else of a similar type. It also means physically separate. And so this phylogenetic tree shows just how separate it is. So here we see the mammalian and the avian real viruses, and they're separated here from the fish viruses. But check this out, PRV, boof, right down the middle. It actually connects the two worlds. It bridges the gap. I don't know about you, but I find that fascinating, but I also find it a little freaky. So then I came across this study, and again, it's talking about the myocarditis or heart disease. And I thought I'd hit the jackpot because they actually match it to a chicken virus. So here we go. They match the protein to an avian orthorheal virus. And when you look that up, it takes you to Skyline Models database, which is a whole bunch of chicken viruses. Now it says here E value, and remember here it says E value 6E71. So here are the E values, and I scroll down to, here we go, 6E71 avian orthorheal virus. And when you click on here, it takes you to what the virus does in chickens. And here we go. A novel avian real virus, so it's new and unusual in the chickens as well. They're finding this in the feedlots where the poor birds are really crammed together. And this virus has been isolated from chickens experiencing a runting, stunting syndrome, which I believe is a symptom of heart disease. <laughs> and this is what they matched the PRV up to? That's crazy. So then while I'm in the midst of doing my studies on PRV, I come across a baboon real virus. And I'm like, why is a baboon real virus study showing up when I'm looking for PRV? So I looked into it, and here's what I just discovered. They're really excited about the Piscine real virus because they said it's recently been described and proposed to represent the prototype strain of another new mammalian virus, not a fish virus species. Hello, that's in the salmon. <laughs> so... And then I come across this study here and I see how they got to that conclusion because 
Piscine Rio virus contains 10 RNA genome segments, while the fish viruses have 11. Yeah, that can't be good. And then I came across this study here, and these scientists say too say that it's equally related to both the mammalian and the fish viruses. I found this study really interesting though because they're saying that Piscine Rio virus looks like it should be acting one way, but it's not, it's acting another which I guess would not be too unusual if you're a virus used to being in a mammal and all of a sudden you find yourself in a fish. Um, here it says that there, one of the proteins is the first example uh, seen in either the ortho or the aquareal viruses. So they've never seen this before. Uh, they're saying that it has um, there's a novel integral membrane protein, and according to them it's quite hardy. And they're saying that there should be a taxonomic classification of this virus, and I'd have to agree because I think it's pretty special. And then I came across this here, which is a patent for a vaccine uh, for the Piscine Rio virus, and this is by uh, Dr. Lipkin, and he is proposing that the Piscine Rio virus should also be in a new genus um, called Sal Rio. Here we see the mammalian viruses, and here we see the fish viruses. You think that stands for salmon rio? Perhaps they should call it chicken salmon rio, but I guess it's up to them what they want to call it. And then I came across this study, and I'm, and I'm going to close here because I'm pretty sure by now that you've come to your own conclusions. I know I sure as heck have come to some of mine. And I don't think scientists ever put anything into a study unless it's really important. And so... I just find it kind of interesting as to why would they, when they're doing an entire study on fish, would they decide to include this? Basically what they're saying here is the etiology, which is the source or the origin of myocarditis or heart disease in humans, remains unknown in most cases. But an association with a viral infection has attracted a lot of attention over the last years. Hmm. And so... I don't know why they would put that in there, but I'll let you come to your own conclusions as to why they would feel that was important enough to include. So here we are. We have a virus in salmon that causes heart disease, and they match it to a virus in chickens that causes heart disease. We know most of the scientists are saying it, it's distinct, it's novel, it's half fish and half mammalian. It should have its own designation or genus, because according to them, it's new and improved. Uh, I've heard that it is resistant to high temperatures and we know that the temperatures that they freeze sushi at preserves viruses it doesn't kill them and I believe the criteria for crossing species has been fulfilled as first a method for it to get in and that would be most likely through the feces secondly the ability to infect its new host and yes it seems to be causing heart and muscle disease first in the chickens and now in the fish and third, the ability to spread to uninfected hosts within the new species, which the scientists themselves have confirmed spreads like wildfire to the other fish. So just a few weeks ago, we had insider information that the fish farms out here in BC put half a million salmon smolts already infected with the Piscine Rio virus into open nets. So if that's true, not only does our government think it's okay to grow diseased flesh for human consumption, they haven't done any studies on Piscine Rio virus saying it's okay for us to eat. And what does your doctor tell you to eat when you have heart disease? Yeah, go have some salmon. You know, there's a saying out here in BC, and I hope you'll take it to heart as well, and there's no pun intended there. But that's that friends don't let friends eat farm salmon. And after everything I've read and researched on here, I'm going to have to agree with that 100%. And I hope you do as well. So good luck and good health to you and your family. And if you believe that this message is important to those that you love and care about, then please share it with them.